trying to load it up yeah it's well it's trying to connect to youtube or something like that or Okay, so let's try this again. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, RIB back for another video. Uh, with me today is, um, if you just want to introduce yourself. Okay, so just say just like literally anything again. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so let's try this again. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, RIB back for another video. Uh, with me today is, um, if you just want to introduce yourself. No, man, it's, it's, it's extremely low. I can barely hear you. Is there any sort of like a, I don't know, like a, a setting that you can use for like your microphone levels and just try and just boost them up? Yeah, it's just so in the YouTube, um, in the YouTube stream, it's 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 just it's just ridiculously quiet. We just can't hear you at all. This is this is kind of bumming me out now. I'm not gonna lie. No, same story, man. Yeah, that is very, very, very weird. Yeah, I don't know what's what's going on either, dude. I'm gonna I'm I'm just gonna level with you. I don't I honestly don't know if I'm gonna be if I'm just gonna level with you. Okay, well, it's a little unorthodox, and I genuinely have not actually done this before, but I could answer the call on my phone and then just have that up to my mic and just broadcast it that way because I can still hear you. So I think it might, well, yeah, it might, might work that way, hopefully. 
Uh, okay, so I don't actually have Skype on my phone, so I'm going to call you back on uh, Hangouts, all right? Okay. Yeah, okay, so I'm calling you over there and I do it, all right? Oh, wow, camera's on. Don't want that, okay. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so let's just try this again. Okay, so uh, if you just wanna say something there. Yeah, hi everybody, yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> hopefully, this is uh, not the way that we usually do things, but uh, hopefully we can hear now. Yeah. Check that. Okay, so uh, if you just want to say something. Can you hear me? <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, okay, so we can we can hear you. We can we well I can anyway. Okay. Is it still okay quality and or is, uh, it, is it bad? Well, I mean, it's going from mic to mic, so... Yeah. It's kind of a little bit muffly, or but not, not, not great quality. Well, it's not, it's not great, but look, it's, it's workable. It's, it's workable. Okay. We can, we can, we can make out what you're saying and stuff like that, so, you know. Oh, right, okay. Let's, yeah, let's go ahead on that basis then. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so, like, we had, we had kind of talked there in the, um, the off portion or in the quiet uh, portion uh, about how we were going to kind of play this so yeah I th I think if you just just kind of want to say just kind of what you believe and how you can justify what you okay what well you believe. basically uh, yeah that's fine uh, basically I am I founded um, a new philosophy which is called astronism uh, really it's it's um, a mixture between a philosophy and religion so we call it an organized philosophy and the basic idea is is that um, basically when we when we die um, that we that we go back to the cosmos basically that we go back to um, to to the earth but the, the earth as, as a uh, as a product of, of the cosmos of course um, and it's really this idea that um, there isn't really an afterlife. Um, we don't really, we don't really have souls or anything like that. Um, we really do just um, we die, but but there is this process of us returning from where we have come, um, and and that process is is what I've called osmosis. So that is like um. We call it like a cosmic union, so returning to 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 the cosmos when we die, and 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 you can see things uh, actually physical processes like decomposition, for example, uh, where we physically our bones physically go back into the earth if if the or or through cremation we're scattered and and you know our ashes are scattered and and they go back into the earth in that way. Um, so it's it's, a, it's very naturalistic. It's um, it's there are supernatural elements. Don't get me wrong, um, but but it is mainly naturalistic. And the other most important part about it is we have a different um, what we call world view, really a different way of, of perceiving the world, and we call that a cosmocentric view of the world or view of existence really and basically that is um sort of the the cosmos or space if you will that is the center of of our spirituality our our beliefs our focus so just like uh, christians would focus on um contemplating god and the nature of god uh, we would focus on contemplating the cosmos, for example. Um, that's why there's a very strong tradition of philosophy that exists within astronism. 
um, because we, um, we we philosophize about about the cosmos, uh, and so that is that, that's a very new thing. It's a very different thing, um, but there's also a, a long tradition of, of um, astronomical religions, of course, things like astrology and, and other things like that. And even though we are sort of separate from those, we do share that same history, so that same lineage, if you will. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very it's obviously very new. Um, it was founded about six years ago by myself, and um, it's still in its developmental stage. Uh, okay, um, I. <laughs> wasn't it <laughs> yeah no no, no no it's no no, no. Yeah. it's not that no, no the, the like i guess the kind of most glaring question for me has been um yeah. you've mentioned a religion several times yeah. but you never yeah. mentioned any sort of like a deity that you believe in well no because i mean we do have um god as in the f well in philosophy we call it the uncaused first cause uh, of of existence which is i think came from ancient greek philosophy um so we have that concept and, and we we call that the divine um but it's not central and that's the thing we need to remember about astronism is is that um the contemplation of god really isn't central i would say that we are it, it's still there, but it's it's not central. So it's a kind of like Buddhism in that way. You can make a parallel there because in Buddhism, um, it, it's non-theistic. So even though they may believe in some sort of God, it's not central to their beliefs. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's not all encompassing like it is in Christianity. It's not the main focus, if you will, and it, it's similar to that in that way. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, okay, so if you just kind of want to just like describe f for me the like type of like a yeah, a yeah, see, I was I was gonna say if you want to just describe the type of deity, but it's not even well, no, it's it's really different. yeah, yeah. I mean, the deity that would um, you could say basically uh, it, it's something that exists outside of, of of our reality if you will um you could you could call astronism panentheistic i don't know if you're aware of that term yeah. but um where god sort of exists outside of our reality but kind of interpenetrates it a little bit as well um so it's, it, it's the divine concept is a little bit like that but again it's really not central um and in religion really the, there's lots of different types of religion of course and they don't all need to be centered on 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 God in particular um there's there's many different religions that are um more spiritualistic rather than theocentric if you if you know what i mean and, and astronism um i would say is probably non-theistic i would say it's not really too concerned with whether god exists or not or or, or you know that type of subject area if you know if you know what i mean yeah okay so um the again sort of the like biggest question that i have kind of coming out of uh, all that you would yeah. you would yeah. said that like the deity that or the you know whatever that you believe in doesn't yeah. um or sorry it exists outside of our uh yeah, yeah. our reality or mm. our existence yeah yeah okay. so if if like, i could just kind of ask you the uh question then what is the difference between what you believe in and something that does not exist? What is the difference between something I believe in? Uh, oh, you mean outside of, of this reality, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, for, for us, really, 
well, the divine doesn't penetrate this this reality, and, and that there are um, for us instances in which we can see, you know, for example, the creation of of the Big Bang, for example, we would say would be an example of some sort of uncaused first cause, if you know what I mean. Something must have um, created that, and and that's a very deep philosophical. It's got a very long history. This idea of the uncaused first cause, um, yeah. idea that there has to be a cause for something, because otherwise we start no, going. You see, light. the only yeah. thing that I kind of have to mm-hmm. take out of that was you had said that like something had to have had to make all of this, or something had to create all of this. I think is what you said. Well, it's like a yeah, an uncaused yeah. first cause. So yeah. the problem that I that I have with that is the fact is the fact that you are using the word create because create yeah, implies okay. a creator, and so you're smuggling it in. Yes. No. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Um, and I think, well, really, but it's 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 a different type of creator, I, I suppose. It's it's you you've got to understand it in that sense of um, this is this is the. You could say some type of force. I mean, it could be something like gravity. Um, you know, that that sort of is pulling the universe together. You know, you you could understand the gravity in that way, as in we couldn't exist without gravity. Um, you know, and, and then that that's what sort of makes the universe um, as it is, if if you know what I mean. Uh, so you could understand it in that way, but I get what you're saying about the world. Yeah, I think if we if we start going into the realm of uncreatedness, which is a part of astronomy, um, and we can get to that at some point, okay. we start going into this idea from from sort of Hindu and and sort of Buddhist traditions of sort of uh, the universe has always existed. You know, it, it's it's that always existed idea which you know is that's interesting and it's it's an interesting idea and definitely astronism would be open to that i'm not saying that it's that it's um entirely um set in stone um but but the idea that there was something that that was an uncaused first cause um I, I think that's quite important to, to, to stress, I think. But it, but the discussion of that isn't central to astronism, and, and that's what we need to remember, I think. If, if you understand what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So I, yeah. I understand what you mean. Um, okay, so I think we've kind of went over yeah enough about what you believe so okay if, if you if if you want to just kind of just go on to you know how you can justify that that uh that uh, belief well the main belief in astronism that we have that that is is important to us is this idea of of cosmocentricity which is our world view that's how we perceive the world that's how we perceive um why we are here uh, what we are doing here, I mean, it's all based on this idea of, of, of cosmocentricity, um, which is a term that I coined uh, to relate to um, to this belief. Um, and basically, that that is all about this idea that it, it really is our destiny to explore space, firstly, and secondly, that our perception is severely um quite narrow if you know what i mean as as one species on one planet in the universe our perception is is extremely narrow and what what our main uh you could say our main goal is to really expand that perception and and make it more cosmic rather than just human, if you know what I mean, or just uh, just Earth centric, more cosmo centric. So um, that's a really important element. And then, of course, the the other idea of of cosmosis. I suppose that does kind of speak for itself in the sense that it is quite naturalistic in its nature. 
because it's exploring ideas that, um, well, in the sense that when we die, it's not saying that we're going to any particular place. It's not saying that there is an afterlife. It's literally just saying that we are returning to, you know, our where we came was the cosmos if you think about it we all came from the big bang everything happened from the big bang onwards and really in our lives towards the end of our lives you know we are returning to that we are dying we are um decomposing um so in that sense there is no natural uh, supernatural element However, there are different schools within astronism that have developed over the last six years. Uh, and, and in those different schools of thought, there are some supernatural beliefs that involve a spiritual element. And they, they incorporate a spiritual element into this idea of cosmosis. So um, people who would follow that school of thought, thought would, for example, say that okay, once we've gone back to the Earth, once we've gone back to the cosmos, we've, we've decomposed, there is some sort of spiritual uh, element of ourselves that lives on in some way and, um, for example, goes up to the stars or um, that's a very ancient belief that we can get into at some point um, or, or, or just goes to some sort of heaven. But it's not... The main belief of astronism, the the, the 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 school of thought that I follow, that I founded and that I follow, is this is basically just this idea that really um, we have a destiny, we do have a destiny. I do believe that, but that there isn't really an afterlife. There is just uh, this naturalistic process uh, where we where we return to the earth, um, and that really our destiny is to explore the cosmos to explore space and um that's enough for me i mean i don't know if it's enough for other people i mean i obviously i know that my followers and, and people who follow astronism it's enough for them um but it's enough for me to know that um my purpose to exist is is so that either myself hopefully one day or, or my ancestors or, or people um, in the future can explore space I and mean, that that's just the, the best thing I think <laughs> to be able to do that you know I think that's our purpose yeah look dude I'm not like basically everything that you said apart from the whole kind of yeah. like spiritual um, elements of it dude yeah. I'm I'm right up there with you I okay. I you know uh yeah. totally 100% you know uh, the the uh yeah and I think big that... bang happened all of that sort of stuff yeah. uh, I don't believe in an afterlife in the traditional sense so yeah. I say? and I don't either yeah you're yeah, right so... I, don't. I don't and I think I've I've created astronism really as an alternative to that really um I mean if you look at some of the other religions in the world the most dominant ones are those that, that sort of profess this afterlife and, and the, the sort of morality-based system where if you do th certain things, uh, you won't get to this paradise, for example. There is none of that in astronism at all. Um, and, you know, it, it really is more about philosophy and exploring ideas rather than telling people what they can and can't do do you know what i mean um so yeah i mean I, and I think as well when i have spoken to really um both staunch atheists but also anti-religious people in general um they've sort of they've been kind of quite kind to me um generally there have been some who sort of completely dismissed what i'm i'm saying and 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 you know everything like that but um a lot of them have been fairly you know positive about it because it is quite naturalistic it's not saying that we're gonna go to um you know a paradise after we've died or, or anything like that or we're gonna see our loved ones again or you know it's not saying that it, it's very based in 
really rationality, really, you could argue, and logic. And that's where we see the philosophical element of it. Yeah, okay, so yeah, I um I'm just gonna level with you. I'm I'm struggling yeah. to find a difference in what we believe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm brilliant. Genuine, like, oh. like like <laughs> Okay. When you had said that, like, yeah. um, other atheists like had been quite kind to you, I fully understand why. I fully understand right. why because right. you're not you're not promote or you're, you're not uh, what's the word? You're not promoting this idea of like an absolute set of moral standards, and it's based oh on God. what a deity from however many thousand years ago said, and all of these sort of things. So. I fully kind of get like where you're kind of coming from and, and like what you're saying, yeah. but I guess th like the like one and only problem, and it's maybe an error to call it that, is that I I'm I'm genuinely struggling to find a difference in what we actually don't agree on. Like I don't <laughs> I don't I don't disagree with like I wouldn't have used the word spiritual. Like I like wouldn't have used that word, but I mean like like that's a that's a minor detail at best so I'm, I'm just kind of no it's interesting I'm, I need to probably explain it a little bit more and then maybe you might not agree as much but another really important element of it is um, so we've, just to set out what we've what we've discussed so far so we've got astronism which is the name of, of this organised philosophy as, as we call it we've got its worldview which is cosmocentricity or cosmocentrism, just like Christianity is theocentric, we are cosmocentric. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got this idea of cosmosis, which is um, this idea that when we die, we go back to the cosmos, we go back to the earth, um, and that the, the, there is no particular afterlife. Um, and then where it sort of was talking about how you know we should explore the universe and and that's our main existential uh, goal and, and destiny to to explore the universe that's why we you know um we have the intelligence hopefully one day to be able to do that um but then what i came to was okay but how there's, there's something quite missing from that and what i wanted to introduce um, as the final, third and final sort of main element, is this um, belief in what we call astrosis. So not so. This is like a separate process, cosmosis. Now I'm talking about astrosis, which is um, basically the idea that we can achieve this sort of union with the cosmos or this. Um, yeah, this union with the cosmos or this sort of um, intellectual union while we're still alive. So no matter who you are, no matter what religion you believe, cosmosis will happen for you. It doesn't matter whether you're good, bad, or anything else. You are going to, from our perspective, you will, you will go back to the earth and you will decompose, and, and that's it. Whereas the, to be an astronist specifically... Um, is to go towards this goal, really, of astrosis, because not everyone can achieve that. And I feel that I'm on that, that road. And really what astrosis is, is this idea that we can achieve, like I've said before, this cosmic union when we're still alive through like an intellectual process through through learning about the cosmos more through having some type of connection to it because i i i feel when i look up the stars and when i learn more about the stars i do feel a greater connection to to the universe you know to you know i feel more emotional about it and um the greater education we have about anything we feel closer to it and have a greater understanding of it um and what astrosis is is this process that hopefully people will experience throughout their lives of trying to understand the cosmos in the best way possible in the highest way possible um by both learning about it observing it 
Uh, and hopefully one day, I hope, uh, well, I, I believe that we will explore it. So that will be another uh, sort of, you could say, approach to this idea of astrosis, um, where we can actually have physical um, interaction, really, with, with the stars, um, with, with, with space, uh, which really will change our perspective. Uh, it will change how we see ourselves as as a as a, um, a species, um, and so I, I mean I don't know what you kind of think of that. Maybe I've sort of gone off the rails from what, what you're thinking, but um, I think that is really important, and it gives us our as astronauts, it gives us our greater purpose. It gives us it gives us a more defined purpose. Um, than just you know when we die we go into the ground do you know what i mean because anyone could believe that an atheist could believe that or or, or just a non-astronist could believe that do you know what i mean so i think this idea of astrosis that that is sort of um connected to this other process of cosmosis um it, it just gives it that purpose it just gives it that that, that idea that we we can achieve this um, during our lifetime, not just something that we achieve when we die. Um, so I don't I don't know whether I've gone maybe. Yeah, too there, far there was uh, there was there was there was there was one question that I uh, I kind of yeah. have basically. So you had said that like some people uh, reach this level of um, uh, ast astrosis. Is that what you yeah. is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, and that like that like that was basically people kind of going back into you know the the earth and the cosmos and everything but so like oh god okay so why does somebody have to be which is anyone no matter what you're doing who you are can can achieve that yeah and then we have this idea of astro first um we're not everyone will achieve that because not everyone will learn about the cosmos and not everyone will have a um a connection to the cosmos um like you know maybe an astronist would but i'm not saying that that process and the achievement of that is um is sort of well just for people who follow astronism anyone can do that um but what astronism would say is is that by following astronism you might get the better if you know what i mean we, we've sort of created a set of practices and ideas and a really a framework for people to to follow in order to achieve that better but they could do it free uh well you could you could do it you could call it freelance you could <laughs> you could do it yourself if you wanted yeah but um you might find it easier to be part of a system that that sort of is already laid out for you you you've got those apparatus that framework to 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 achieve it with if you know what i mean but it's it's not by any means reserved just for astronists but it is the goal of all astronists to achieve that if if you know what i'm saying yeah okay so i hear what you're saying but so yeah. what is the the benefit then to ascribing to your worldview over let's say mine yeah okay no that's fine i mean it depends what world you have i mean i'm not I've, I've, well, I'm i mean not, like uh, mine is uh, i i mean like i don't i don't as, i don't ascribe to this in every in yeah. every sense but it, like i guess a naturalistic worldview is probably the the closest thing that you could probably okay. say uh, um so yeah. i oh, believe just yeah. for for um example that uh, after we die there is no afterlife there's no there's no anything like that yeah. and uh you know we go into the ground and we feed the worms so. basically right uh yeah. even this 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 kind of thing that like we are returned into the the um cosmos there's there's arguably now i i would i would pr probably say that it would it would be um it would be a stretch but i would i would say that like there is 
a probabilistic naturalistic cause for that potentially happening even under yeah. my my worldview so yeah. like our worldviews are very very similar although you've yeah. you've um i think and i I, I don't mean this to like kind of come across as like a negative thing because I don't mean it as it, but yeah. you've you've kind of clearly tried to distance our worldviews in some respects, only in some I would say. Um, yeah. So I, think, uh, I guess then um, like the well, like kind of biggest question is, yeah. what is the benefit to ascribing to your worldview over mine? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I think one thing we need to get a good understanding of is that yes you you have a naturalistic worldview and so do we really um but i would say that we are a derivation or a, or a branch of your worldview that is specific to um obviously cosmocentrism so we have mm -hmm. we are naturalistic but we're specifically cosmocentric so that is something that is fairly, probably quite unique to us really i, I i've look, obviously studied all the different types of religions, um, and none of them really have that type of of, of worldview. They may have a naturalistic worldview, but that can be towards like terrestrial um, nature rather than cosmic. You know, on the, on the level of galaxies and stars and planets and and all those types of on that level, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, we are very closely aligned actually, um, and I think obviously we share the, that belief or disbelief if you will in in um, the afterlife and, and i mean on the context of god it might be a little bit different but definitely on the idea of afterlife and and this idea of the soul we've sort of have similar ideas on um but then obviously as you were saying that um well what is the difference well the difference is that in astronism there is so there, when I say spirituality, there is a spirituality in the sense that, um, but but not in not in the sense of a soul. I would say spirituality in the sense that um, emotionally, emotionally spiritual. So when I look up at the stars or when I go stargazing, for example, that is like a religious thing for me. That is a I don't just do that like a scientist would. Do you know what I mean? And that's the difference. I'm looking at it very much from a philosophical, spiritual, maybe spiritual is not the best word. I might need to create a new word for it. Mm -hmm. But um, there's an emotion there for me that, that wouldn't be there for, you know, perhaps yourself, I don't know, but, but definitely not for a scientist who, who is purely just looking at it from a scientific point of view. Um, and I think that's something we need to, un to get clear. But then also we have this idea of astrosis, which is um, obviously this idea that we can achieve um, th this, I this sort of cosmic union while we're still alive. Now, to understand astrosis, like everything in astronism, there's different approaches. And I've known people take a spiritual approach to that. So they say that their achievement of astrosis throughout their life is in relation to their spirit. It is in relation to, um, you know, a spiritual element. For me, uh, the, the, it's sort of going between spiritual and just naturalistic for me, um, or, or intellectual, you could say. Um, for me, it is, it's, it's, it's a mixture of the two, I would say. Um, I think for me, the achievement of astrosis during my lifetime, um, it's definitely a religious journey, definitely. Whether it's a spiritual one in that sense, I'm a little bit less comfortable with that, um, but definitely an intellectual one. So it's definitely about knowledge. It's definitely about um, philosophi philosophizing or, or being philosophical about the cosmos um so i think that's possibly where we perhaps differ uh, but i don't think we differ that too much from from what you're saying um i think i am probably slightly more towards um the spiritual side of things or the um the, 
the, the well, it's what I like to call preternatural. So not entirely supernatural, but um, not also natural as well. I like to sort of um, there really uh, between those two. Um, okay. Uh, yes, yeah. that's that's where we're gonna come into our first difference. I'm afraid. Um, no, it's fine. It's great. Well, that's why I came on this program because yeah. I think. You know, you, you were sort of asking my colleague about why does he want to do this? Because it's called, um, you know, you're not a religious person and you're yeah. not really, yeah, you yeah. know. And I was like, well, no, because I speak to every different person and I've spoken with atheists, I've spoken with staunchly, really deeply anti religious people. You know, anti religious in general, they just hate religion in general or any type of belief. Um, and it's a good it's a good thing. I enjoy it. You know, I don't want to just speak to people who share the same beliefs as me. I want to speak to people who, who don't, because that that makes me better. To be honest, it, it makes it gives me more knowledge. You know. Okay, so uh, I can respect everything that you have just said. Uh, the biggest, the one and only kind of glaring difference that I'm after kind of picking up is um, you had mentioned what is a peta nature or something? On those peta nature, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so things are either natural or they're supernatural. Right. I, okay. I, I, I take massive issue with this kind of in-between area. Um, You're at, okay. so, so, like, basically, it's like, so something is either naturally occurring or it's not. So... I, yeah, I, mean, I think it might just be... I might not have explained it properly. That What I mean by preternatural, we, generally we don't use it in the context of um, theology. We use it more in the context of, of people's abilities. So, um, for example, I do believe that um, certain people have greater abilities than others and that those they're not um for well for example myself um i don't know if you know much about the book that i've written do you do you know much about about that book or, or uh, not? no no uh well it's it's one of the longest books in the world it's two million word, words long um and this is the book that is that has founded the astronomism um it's called the omnidoxy um and it was solely written by me from the age of 15 um i i was able to write this book um really with before i even went to philosophy really before i even um had any education really in that and I had experiences um, that that uh, not not divine revelation or anything, but um, experiences that uh, ideas basically a huge amount of ideas um, uh, in an abnormal way, in a way that wasn't normal uh, to me or those around me who I was telling. Um, them uh, i mean i was having ideas um you know i'd wake up at like three o'clock in the morning and i'd have just have ideas constantly flowing out of my mind about this about astronism uh and i would start writing about about these things and i could write sort of tremendously like twenty thousand words you know in, in a short space of time for example um and that's how, obviously, I was able to write this book, you know, this two million word book, so um, so quickly. Uh, um, and and so that's what I would describe as as preternatural. I would describe because to me that isn't really normal. To me, I'm not saying that I've got superpowers and all that stuff. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is that to me, what I experienced didn't seem to be normal, and it didn't seem to be. I didn't see anyone else experience, for, for example. Do you know what I mean? I, I didn't really see anyone else do this. Um, and I had these ideas, and they, they just kept flowing. And, and I'm very honest with you. This this is what happened. 
I, I would all day, every day, constant ideas about this religion, about this philosophy that would constantly come into my mind all the time. And it, it got it got more and more as I, as I went on, um, you know, and, and obviously, because how else do you think I was able to write that, that long book? Um, and so that's the context that we use this word preternatural. So I think we need to just just remember that it's not. I'm not saying that we have uh, supernatural ability, but just abnormal. You know, beyond the abilities of others, you could say. Which okay, so I really you... disagree with. That fine, um, you know, but it's. Um, I can only tell you what I experienced, and that's what I had experienced, and. You know, okay. that's uh, all I can say, you know? Do you think that you had any sort of, um, how should I say it, any sort of supernatural aid when you were writing the book? Uh, no, not in the sense of, of no, not divine, not di not in the sense of divine. Um, I wouldn't even narrow or, or, it down to being divine, I would just kind of say anything that was like against nature. No, no, I, I think um, I, I, mean, I, definitely... I would, I would even kind of say, I mean, like being like against nature. I mean, I, I would even say that, like, I don't know, did you, did you take a rake of speed before you? No, no. Okay, so um, yeah, wouldn't, I'm wouldn't not like that. No, I wasn't. I was not. No, 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 you're right. no, wasn't sorry. accusing you. I'm just so like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of struggling then to kind of realize. Or to kind of understand why you think that it wasn't just a purely natural occurrence, because well, if you didn't have any that. sort of yeah. like like yeah. outside influence or outside aid, then what? Mm -hmm. Then I mean, like, why was it anything other than just a natural occurrence? Well, I think it was a natural occurrence in the, the how it happened, and I think in in the sense that number one, it started when I was fifteen, and it started very very suddenly. Um, there was there was no I can't remember any real trigger to it, um, and secondly, it was happening on at such a rate that um, I'm, and I'm not saying that it's not that it's beyond nature. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is is that it's um, it, it wasn't I, I, it wasn't what other people might be able to to write you know what i mean it, 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 i can't imagine many other people being able to do that other people might have been able to do it don't get me wrong yeah um but to, to be able to write that amount in in a fairly short space of time mm. with very very little um education on 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 theology and and, and philosophy um to me it just didn't seem right. It didn't seem, um, and it's still to this day. I mean, this is something that's very, very personal to me. This is something that I'm still trying to understand myself, and I, and I think that's important to say. Um, is is that I'm still grappling with this, and, and really, what actually just happened? How have I even created this? You know, um, I okay, come so, from. A, um, sorry, I just, yeah. I just, I just yeah. have to go back. Um, I realize that they're they're not the same things. I mean, obviously, like you were doing a book, but I mean, there's not an awful lot of people who can do the same things that Harry Houdini did. I wouldn't describe him as being supernatural, though. No, I would. I wouldn't do either. But I would. Pre I uh, pretty natural, possibly, possibly. Uh, he could be. Well, have been. I mean, there was a naturalistic ex explanation for everything that he did. Yeah, I, I wouldn't compare myself to him. Um, I wasn't asking you I'm, to. I'm, I'm like basically yeah. just using him as the example of, you know, like just because there's not an awful lot of people who can do as he yeah. did, it doesn't mean that he was, like, yeah. beyond human or that he was beyond nature or that like anything yeah. that he did had any sort of like a supernatural uh, element to it. Yeah. But, but you could so, say uh, this is how we describe preternatural is is something like an abnormal um I'm, I'm not saying that it's supernatural but it was definitely abnormal or or, or beyond normal ability of 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 you know the majority of other people i think that's the best way to sort of pinpoint it um and we see these people throughout history um you know 
Harry Houdini, yeah, could, could possibly have, have been one example of that, where he had this sort of uh, fantastic ability to be able to, um, to to conduct those types of performances. I don't really know a huge amount about him. Um, but, you know, from my perspective, just from, from learning about history and learning about all these different people in history and who are still alive today, um what i experienced just it wasn't normal put it that way i think i wouldn't go as far to say it's supernatural and i never have done i never will so that that it was beyond beyond nature i mean i have I've, i have had separately to that i have had you know um you could say sort of deep contemplations and and i, I do like the practice of meditation Example, I think that's quite helpful. Um, I think it's quite a good practice, um, and and deep contemplations. Definitely, I've had those to the extent to which you know I envision sort of the cosmos um, in in a very clear sense, uh, even though it wasn't right in front of me. For example, um, so definitely a really good imagination, you know. Um, that that is at the centre of, of of everything we're talking about, um, but I wouldn't necessarily describe it as normal. Do you know what I mean? I think that's the best way to put it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um... I wouldn't say I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not saying that it's supernatural, but I'm yeah. not also saying that it's normal because it isn't really. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Could we do that? I, I'm. Uh... Yeah, look for the sake of discussion. I mean, like, yeah, I'll, I'll just, uh, yeah, I will agree that. Um, there's one question that I want to um ask. Uh, basically, so like, yeah. I'm still kind of battling with yeah. this idea of um, of astrosis. I mean, like, yeah. what does cosmic union while while you're alive mean, and why would I want it? Yeah, correct. Um, so basically, it is um, it's it's an intellectual process. For example, it, it's definitely an intellectual process. Um, it's um, you could say as well. Some people would, would want to attach spiritual ideas to that as as like a spiritual process and um, something that is beyond the natural for them. You know, the, you've got to understand that. People can bring to this what they wish, and, and if they've got a spiritual worldview already, then they will attach those ideas to astrosis. But but the the core school that I follow um, is is that astrosis is a, is an intellectual process, um, and really you would want to um, achieve it or or to at least go towards it because to learn more about the universe that we live in. There's so many questions that are unanswered, um, both existentially regarding why we even exist in the universe, our place in the universe, um, and also regarding um, the universe itself, the nature of the cosmos. Um, okay, cosmos is expanding, what is it expanding into? Those types of questions. And I'm not saying that astrosis can can give you those answers straight away but it's it's more of um an ability to perceive the cosmos in a way that um is yeah a bit beyond beyond normal people those who would just achieve cosmosis when they die for example um you could you could also in a, in a sense you could also um relate to um enlightenment um in buddhism different in the sense that it's not necessarily a spiritual process uh, and there's nothing to do with reincarnation or anything like that but in this sense that you're on a journey i think is how you can um relate the two things um of course enlightenment's got nothing to do with space and and, and sort of the cosmos but it, it 
but you can sort of see a parallel there between those two things. And astrosis really is this sort of this lifelong journey of, um, you know, attempting to achieve um, this sort of greater understanding, greater awareness um, of, of the cosmos. And I think people would benefit from from achieving that. Well, in in the sense that it will probably give them existential purpose. I, it gives me existential purpose. I can tell you that. Well, it, it I mean, I, me I would I, I would yeah. agree with you in the sense that like it would be it would be like only beneficial for us to expand our knowledge about the cosmos and about the yeah. the universe in in yeah. in general I, but, but not in a but but we have to remember that this, what our process is it's a religious and a philosophical um uh, achievement a, a religious and philosophical process it's not a scientific process it's not just about um it's not just about uh going into a classroom and learning more um it's and it's not, as I've said, just scientific. It is there is a religious, philosophical element to it that it that is that is beyond um, you know the scientific element. Oh, yeah. Uh, huh. Do you know what I mean? The, the, the not. I understand, what, I understand like, what you mean. I I just being an astronomer, for example. And you might not be on this path to astrosis. You might, you could be an astronomer. Um, you, obviously, you're learning a lot about it. But if you don't see the cosmos in that way, if you don't see the cosmos in a philosophical, religious sense, then you can't be on the process to, to astrosis. Do you get what I'm saying? You've got to look at it in that in that way in order to be on that process. Because otherwise, like you might have been wanting to say, was um, Otherwise, what's the difference between um, what I'm saying and just going to astronomy? There is no difference otherwise. So we, it's, it's about how you approach and how you um, perceive the cosmos. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? I understand what you mean. I just, I'm, I'm just struggling to understand why there is like a deistic sort of. Yeah elements in my opinion just like kind of based off of like everything that i've that i've that i've heard so far and just off of everything that you have said like why there's this deistic element kind of shoved in there like i i i yeah i, okay, I kind of don't yeah. really understand what like yeah like i'm on board with pretty much everything that you have said i like yeah. and 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 i can wholeheartedly yeah, respect right. everything that that yeah. you're you're kind of striving to to uh yeah. achieve i just like i just light. i just don't know why there has to be yeah a supernatural totally. deistic element to it that's all no there doesn't yeah i i totally understand that um there doesn't and there really doesn't need to be that and 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 astronism we have to understand this is uh, and this is why i mentioned at the beginning that it really is a synthesis of religion and philosophy. This is a really important point because it's so different from anything else out there because, yes, it has the religious elements. Yes, it does have beliefs in in, in um, things in a religious context, definitely. But then you also have to remember this philosophical side. In philosophy, which is why I'm a philosopher, I love it so much, is open. It's it's open to development. It's open to challenge. It's open to um, reinterpretation. It's open to different approaches coming towards the same thing. Do you get what I'm saying? So yes, totally, totally agree in the sense that why would there need to be uh, 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 sort of this idea of of a creator god or, or some type of uh, creation? Or, or some type of um, yeah panentheistic or, or element to it. Well, there is for me because I believe in the uncaused first cause, but there doesn't need to be for you. There doesn't. Okay. That, so, that... what do you think that the uncaused first cause is? 
Well, to me, that is the idea that there must have been some type of beginning, not necessarily creation, but there must have been some type of, well, I, I, creation to this cosmos, if you know it. If, what we would need to now go into is astronic cosmology or astronist cosmology because I've created or, or developed a whole understanding of really uh, the, the universe, really. Uh, and it's this idea that, I mean, we're straying a little bit further away from the core ideas in astronism, but I'll just explain it. Because um, this, this is why the illogical Okay, so we've got this. We've got those three main ideas: this cosmocentric, cosmosis, and astrosis. They are central, and then there's a huge amount of other beliefs that are part of them that aren't necessarily central, but they are there and they relate to theology and some other disciplines. Um, and one of those disciplines is cosmology. That's really important to, to have an understanding of the universe and, and how it's structured. So what I believe is that there are, that we live in a cosmos, okay, and that that cosmos, the one we live in, is limited. To me, everything is limited. There is nothing that lasts forever in, in our reality here. Um, there is... There, there, could we agree on that level? Just, just yeah. before I go off, yeah. the fact that there is a limitation to everything, um, nothing seems to last forever. You know, um, there is that element to our nature. Um, I also want to preface what I'm about to say is, you don't need to believe in this to be part of astronism or even to be on the path to astrosis or 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 to be cosmocentric, okay? You don't need to follow this. This is my interpretation, okay? Um, there's, there's this, the cosmos, which we exist in, and then we've got, um, I, I believe that there must be something outside of this cosmos, okay? We're still talking in natural terms here. We're not talking in supernatural terms. Okay. Because... If, if something exists, right, like the like cosmos from the Big Bang, expanding, and I mentioned this before, what is it expanding into, okay? And if it's accelerating, like we know from the scientists have told us that it's it's actually accelerating in its expansion, then what is it expanding into, okay? And so I was contemplating this idea for a long, long time and I try to sort of think about, okay, well, it must be expanding into something because it would be illogical to say that it's not expanded into something because remember, I'm a philosopher. I have to think in terms of logic and rationality. Um, so it has to be expanding into something, but that something to me is infinite. To, to me, this is just my own belief, and this is how we define what a cosmos is and what a universe is okay because in astronism you need to understand this as well we have different terms so the cosmos is what we exist in here yeah which is what the the big bang created but i believe in something outside of that which is what i call the universe which i think is is infinite and then we're going to come round to a um, a concept you'll already be familiar with, I, I presume, which is this idea of the multiverse. I do believe in, in the multiverse. Uh, I do believe that there are other, like I've said, cosmos, cosmoses that are also expanding. But they're not expanding... Um, they're not expanding... Well, yeah, they are expanding, sorry, but they're never going to touch each other because the universe that they're expanding into is infinite and therefore they cannot ever clash, for example, okay? Um, and so we have this cosmos. We have all these cosmoses in this universe. There's infinite, infinite amount of cosmoses in this infinite universe, okay? And then, again, we still come to this thing of 
Okay. Um, but what created the universe? Well, nothing really created the universe because the universe is infinite, remember? It, it, it's infinite. it can't have been created. So the universe must always have existed, right? Are you are you kind of with me so far? <laughs> no. You're not with me? No. Just because okay, something right. wasn't created doesn't mean that it was always here. Let, let's just go back. So let's just let, let's just go back. So um, do you get my idea about the cosmos and how how we exist in a cosmos and then something outside of, of this cosmos? There must be some space outside of this cosmos for us to expand into. Can, are we, can you understand that? I'm not saying you agree with it, but yeah, can I, I can understand all this, but I mean, like you've, you've kind of said like, um, you know, that like you believe in the multiverse just for example. I mean, yeah. like, okay. So d do you have evidence that suggests that the multiverse is a reality? No, I don't have evidence of that. Um, but to me, it's based on logic, definitely. Uh, this idea that, okay, if if there is one of something, then there could be others. So we, we that's the, the line of logic that I'm sort of taking. I'm not saying that there is, but there could be others. Okay, I realise that the conversation has been ex extraordinarily... Um uh what's the word i'm thinking of agreeable that's not the word that i yeah. wanted to use but it's just the first one it's no, just the, the yeah, one that's that. that's kind of coming yeah. um yeah that is the worst line of logic that i think i've ever heard <laughs> okay Simply because no. there is one universe does not in any way shape or form well, no, mean no, I'm just that saying there could, could be another no. one i'm just saying that there could be and if it's expanding it's, into yes but, but if we're going along this line that it's could does, could in. does not equal possibility well yeah of course but what i'm saying is is that the cosmos that we exist in is expanding right and what it's expanding into is infinite so i'm i'm saying that it that it's infinite which is what I call the universe, okay? And if, so, if that space that that is is infinite outside our reality, our limited reality, then to me, the the, the could exist, you know, other um, the could exist other cosmoses outside of our own. The could, I mean, it's it's. I'm not saying that there is because I don't know that, but I'm trying to propose um, but ideas. Do you it? Are. Um, and and to me, if if I would say that the universe is infinite, then I've also kind of got to say, well, if it's infinite, then it must also have infinite possibility. And so, if it has infinite possibility, then then I kind of have to say that there is a multiverse, if you know what I mean. If, if we're talking about on infinite levels here, then we're going on to a different level from where we are now. Do you get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, but I yeah. mean, you've kind of already acknowledged that there's no evidence for the multiverse. Well, yeah, there is no evidence yeah, for it because but, I can't leave this, I can't leave this cosmos to, to see here's the that, thing, to just, have any just, evidence for that. But I go on this line second, of... Just, just one sec. I, I, I promise. One yeah, sec. One I'm, sec. Yeah. The time to be, to believe something is after it's been proven, not before. Just, just say it again. The time to to accept something as as being true is after it has been proven. Not of course before. it is. Yes. Correct. I agree. Right. But you've just said that you believe in the multiverse, and yet you've also said that you don't that it hasn't been, well, been proven so there's know. a little bit of a contradiction there because no, 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 you no, agreed no. with my statement and yet you 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 have you have two conflicting beliefs well i i be, i there's a difference between belief and knowing i i don't know that there is but i believe i don't need i don't need any evidence to show that okay so maybe myself. it's just a conflict maybe it's just a conflict of of definitions yeah. that there, there are sorry not a conflict of definitions a conflict of terms that, that we're using um so like i i 
I use believe and know interchangeably. So yeah, I don't. I, I only don't. believe something after it's yeah. been proven. So right. if it's if it's been proven, then we know that it's 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 either well, true or it exists, mean. depending on what you're talking yeah. about. So see, yeah, okay, no, I, I get what you're saying. Um, to me, that's totally wrong because that isn't the definition of belief. Belief is 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 having faith in something. Okay, well, even I mean, don't know. Even okay, so if you like, don't know, words words don't. Happen. Words I mean? don't have intrinsic meanings; they have usages, and that is yeah, my usage of the word of the word "believe." I use them interchangeably. Well, that, that's that's absolutely fine for yourself. I mean, for me, obviously, we're talking about philosophy that I have created, and I need to you need to understand the context in which I'm using these words. So you, well, I'm not you shouldn't, but you you if you're going to try and understand what I'm saying, you need to understand the words that I'm using to do that. And you need to look from my point of view and I'll think, okay, so he's using these words in that way. You know what I mean? And I keep the words I believe I, and the word I was, I was, very I, was I was only saying that just so that like we, we could, we could kind of clear up any sort of, uh, yeah, of course. Misunderstanding. No, that's um, yeah. yeah, I just, I just don't. <sighs> okay. Yeah. But, yeah okay. yeah but i mean like okay so even though yeah. you are you are using the word believe in the more traditional sense i still kind of have to ask the the question is mm -hmm. of why do you believe it if it hasn't been been proven because here's the thing with with uh with that uh, me mm -hmm. and i realized that this is our first time talking and that we we like know almost nothing about each other apart from what has been yeah. said on this call but yeah if if you could come up with something or if you found something that i believed that i didn't have evidence for i would stop believing it and so i'm yeah. i'm struggling to understand why you continue to believe in the possibility of the multiverse even though there is next to no evidence for it well, there, there isn't any evidence for it, and because it's hypothesized same... within science, within mm -hmm. different scientific fields, yeah, but it's nowhere even near being yeah. uh, being uh, being uh, proven. That's well, why I phrase it that way. But the point yeah, is, this... I, I just, I just, I just don't know why you believe it. Mm -hmm. no, no, yeah, no, that's fine, uh, and I can I can sort of explain it a little bit. Um, and it's kind of it, it's interesting because the way that astronism, our reality, when I was saying about it being limited. Part of that means that we, as, as people within this cosmos, we cannot ever, I don't think ever, we won't ever be able to leave this cosmos, okay? That's one really important thing when we're talking about cosmology and astronomy, is this idea that we cannot, neither can we leave this cosmos, and can, neither can we know or prove anything beyond this cosmos, okay? That's one thing that um, all we can know and all we can prove and all we can truly understand is inside this cosmos that we live in, okay? So that's something really important to, to get there, firstly. And so because we have that belief, we actually, um, we, we will never be able to know whether the universe is, is, is a multiverse. We'll, ne we'll never be able to know that because our own belief says, well, you can never leave this this cosmos and you can never know. But, but why do you think cosmos. that we'll why do you think that we'll never be able our to own belief, our own belief is actually stating that um that that we cannot know anything beyond this cosmos. But so our hang own on, belief hang on, hang on, hang on. Why yeah, do you yeah. think that we will never be able to demonstrate that a multiverse exists? Why do you think that we'll never be able to like discover beyond our cosmos? Because, like I was saying um, earlier, is that because this cosmos, to me, I, I, I interpret it as being limited in nature. We are limited in nature. We're limited in our thoughts. We're limited in our actions, definitely. And so is the galaxies and the, the, the cosmos itself is limited. If anything is created, like um, it, it has a limitation to it because... It was it was created. It hasn't always existed. So, it, like the cosmos, it can't have always existed. This particular cosmos that we live in, because it was it was created when the Big Bang was was you know cr uh, happened. 
13.8 billion years ago. Yeah. Um, so we can put a number to how long the cosmos has been around. Right. But that's still a limitation. Do you get what I'm saying? That's still a limitation. Even though it's a really long time, it's still a limitation. I so, just, I, you know, okay, we, I, I still don't yeah. understand why you think that we'll never be able to discover the, or like, I'm not even to, like talking about yeah. like going yeah. to one yeah. of the other universes, like, like, like yeah. going into the multiverse and going yeah. to, I don't know, where like yeah. everything is drawn by Disney or something. I don't know. The, yeah. the, but yeah. like, why do you think that we, we like won't even discover um, evidence that, yeah that suggests because, that the multiverse because exists. in order to do that because in order to do that we'd have to leave this um we'd have to leave this cosmos in order to okay, do but that why, do, why don't you think that we can do that eventually because, eventually because, i don't i don't i don't i don't mean right now i don't yeah. even mean in in our lifetimes yeah. i mean eventually yeah. yeah um no i understand that what you're saying um because fundamentally we are limited that, that, that I can't get around that we are limited so being in basically the way that that my cosmology is structured is that we'd have to leave this cosmos go into the universe which is infinite and then enter another cosmos because that's how usually um, that's like a standard multiverse hypothesis is this idea that we live in these kind of bubbles if you will you can imagine them as, as like bubbles so we have leave this one go into the universe as like a infinite space and then go into the next one and i just that just isn't logical because to go into something that is infinite i.e the universe from from my point of view we'd never reach the other cosmos we'd never reach it because the universe is infinite so you can't travel but i, I sorry I, I just yeah i just it's like, difficult. It's really deep stuff. It's really. It's probably the most advanced stuff because this, this is this is technology. I wasn't even yeah. gonna go. I wasn't even going. I wasn't even gonna go anywhere near that. I was gonna say that like that's almost a limitation of your imagination, because well, two hundred yeah, years ago. Yeah. Well, I am limited. Just, I am a limited being. Yeah. But no. But like, what I'm saying is that two yeah. or three hundred years ago, the idea of the phone that is responsible for everybody hearing you right now the uh mm. the s10 plus which is the phone that that, that, that i have that mm. two or three hundred years ago would have been like like a miracle from god yeah like, correct. this, yeah. this like unbelievably yeah. advanced tech yeah. but what i'm saying is that we don't know what unbelievably advanced tech is going to exist two or three hundred years from now yeah, and, I, and I think, I'm not even limiting yeah. it to that period of time. It could be a thousand. It could be two thousand years from yeah. now. The point is, yeah. is that we don't know what 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 is or isn't going to exist in the future. So, yeah, th the the claim that you're essentially making that we we the, the possibility of entering a different cosmos is is next to zero. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would, I would, I would just kind of. Oh, we'd have to change our nature. We'd have to change our nature. Why? So what I believe is Why? that we have a limited nature because in order to go into some, in order to go into the space which I call the universe, um, that's that's infinite, we'd have to become infinite ourselves. We'd have to become. We'd have to change our nature in order to leave. Why would we have to? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Why would we have to become? infinite to enter something that you are describing as infinite well because the cosmos as as we understand it is expanding at uh, as fast as anything that could expand within um you know within this existence right so we have to think about that as well we have to think i mean it's theoretically possible because uh, well, maybe not theoretically, but it's imaginationally possible. You could say that's not a word, but you could say because we can imagine doing that, it could happen. So you could say that. No, but I'm. Not, I, not, I wasn't even going to. I wasn't even going to say that. I was. I was going to say that. 
it is theoretically possible at some point in the future, given the advancements in technology and understanding that they will have then. Much like the example that I that I gave earlier, two or three hundred years ago, the idea of a supercomputer that can fit in my pocket was was unimaginable. Like almost nobody was even imagining that. So the fact that we can imagine it now even is I mean it yeah i mean i'm not saying that i'm against doing that i i I mean i if 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 they somehow could do that that would be absolutely amazing i i I, that would be amazing but i I just don't believe that that will happen but if they could do that somehow gosh more power more power to them you know um they'll probably look on me as some sort of bloody backward person who (laughs) didn't even you know god wasn't even suggesting that wasn't was wasn't even suggesting it. Um, yeah. Okay, so. But uh, yeah, hopefully they would do, and that would then prove the existence of multiverse. So yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so in the interest of time, I know that you had said that you were wanting to kind of wrap it up for yeah. in round now. Um, a new question that I am now going to be asking um, every okay. single caller that that uh, calls in, and I'm going to start yeah. with 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 uh, with yourself is. Um, yeah. In the worst case, like, what is the worst case scenario if you're wrong? Um, there's no, there's no wrong in what wrong in the way I see the world or yes. wrong in, um, well, th- there is no there is no worst case scenario at all. I mean, I'm very open to. You have to understand that astronism is something that will develop beyond me. I'm not going to last forever, okay? I, I'm going to eventually die. Um, and like other religions, people will take over it and they will do what they wish with it, you know? And I've been very relaxed with astronism in its development. And it's not like other religions in the sense that God can come down and said, this is what it is and nothing will ever change as part of that, which is lo- what other religions are like. So, you know, yeah, there isn't really a worst case scenario because as long as, as, long as um, the people in the future who are they're achieving greater knowledge and a greater understanding of of the cosmos, then I'm then I'm happy. Yeah, that's great. That's what astronism is all about. You know, great. So there is no worst case scenario for me okay. as long as people still. I mean, the worst case scenario you could say then is people don't even really care about it and, and just continue living without it and, and just stay on this one planet. Okay, that's the worst case scenario for me. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So just for the video side of it, guys, we're just going to leave it there. Uh, if you just kind of just wouldn't mind just hanging on to like literally a minute yeah. maximum after I end the stream, that'd be absolutely I'm, fantastic. I'm, I'm happy, yeah, that's great. Uh, all right okay uh, so guys so uh, i hope you enjoyed the um stream check back with us tomorrow not exactly 24 hours it'll be a little bit longer than uh, a full day for the next uh call and show so until then 